Hey, it's Brian with Brian Como Photography. I'm gonna share with you today one of my favorite ways of taking photographs, especially at Christmas time, with Bounce Flash. All right, so this is a very simple technique. I'll share with you the technique. I'll walk you through the camera settings and then um, I'll show you some sample photos here. So first of all, you're gonna need a couple of really simple pieces of gear. Obviously one camera and uh, the best is actually to use a prime lens. So what I have on here right now is a, an 85 millimeter F1.8 uh, or you can use a 50 millimeter, which is what I'm actually shooting this with right now. Hence the reason you're getting these kind of bokeh balls from the Christmas tree in the background. Uh, and the other thing you're gonna need is a flash. Now I use an external flash, but I'll also let you uh, in on a little secret on how you can use your onboard internal flash to get this. So first thing you do is you mount your flash onto your camera, just like this. And um, I'll just kind of walk you through some of my settings here right now. So I, I always shoot this on manual. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going, going to want to point your camera at the light source behind you that you wanna get these beautiful kind of uh, uh, out of focus light balls or whatever you wanna call them, the lights on the tree. You're gonna to wanna to point them towards that and you're gonna to wanna to, you know, meter uh, to get the uh, exposure you want off of the tree or off of the outdoor Christmas lights or any kind of light really. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna turn your flash to uh, TTL mode, which TTL uh, is, means through the lens. And what that means is it meters the light coming through the lens and the flash or the camera and the flash decide at what power to shoot your flash at. Uh, so that's really nice, but because you have it dialed into manual, it is going to expose for uh, the tree. So what you're also gonna wanna do is, uh, you know, normally you put your flash on, it looks like this. You're gonna wanna turn it to one side. So. Uh, let's say for example, you want the light to come from this side and hit the subject's face this way and kind of wash over it on this way and have a little bit of shadow here. Uh, you do that by turning the flash away. Now, you do need to have some kind of bounce, something to bounce it off of. So, uh, you know, a wall works well, any kind of neutral color wall. If you use a color wall, you might get a little bit of a color cast in there. Um, but even like a gray wall or a tan wall or a white wall, any of those kind of things will do. Um, Failing that, you can use a you can put up a piece of white cardboard, or even hold have somebody hold up a um, a white T-shirt. That'll work too. So, uh, so what you're going to want to have is again your camera's on manual. Uh, you're going to want to set that aperture uh, pretty much to the highest uh, possible, and and what I mean by highest is largest, so lowest number. So let's say on this lens, for example, it would be f 1.8. Oh, that was interesting. So on this lens, for example, you'd be f 1.8. Uh, and then you're going to want to focus uh, pretty carefully, you know, on your subject. Of course, you want to try to do that on your subject's eyes. And then what you're going to do is when you fire the flash, it's, or when you fire the camera, it's going to be exposed for the light in the background. The uh, flash is going to bounce off of the wall or the uh, cardboard or the t-shirt or whatever it is you have over there. Uh, even a white uh, sheet will do if you have somebody holding up a white sheet. And, uh, and it'll come back and expose the uh, subject properly. So uh, another kind of tip you wanna have is you wanna have your subject quite a bit away from the background. You don't wanna have them right up against back here uh, because you wanna have some of that distance to get that kind of that depth that, uh, that goes along with that. So, uh, so yeah, that's essentially uh, how you do this. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can actually bounce it, you know, any way you want. These flashes are great because they uh, rotate around and you can even have it kind of up at an angle a little bit so that it's kind of bouncing off a ceiling and washing towards this way. Uh, that looks nice as well. You don't tend to get quite as much uh, gradient or uh, quite as strong of a shadow on the one side if you do it that way, uh, but it does work. So you can give it a shot. Um, yeah, so here's some examples. Uh, that I took. So first example here, uh, some great examples. Uh, there was this, I was in this hotel in Vancouver 
and uh, there was this beautiful white marble wall on one side and a big Christmas tree on the other side. And I had a couple of, uh, I was there for a work party and I had my camera there. And uh, so I took a picture of a couple of my coworkers and uh, it just worked beautifully. The beautiful white marble wall was great for bouncing the light off of. Uh, it, it got a really great, great shot. The Christmas tree was nice and big and full. So there was lots of, uh, lots of lights and lots of, uh, you know, lots of decorations there. Um, on the second one here is the same kind of work party, same, same setup exactly, except what I did was I moved in really tight on, on, on the subject and focused on his eye. You know, obviously I only have half his face in the frame. This wasn't uh, cropped afterwards. I, I, I did shoot this. this is basically the full frame. I didn't crop it at all. So I got in super close and, uh, fo you know, focused on his eye, bounced the flash off the wall, uh, you know, exposed for the tree in the background, and then the TTL of the flash exposed his face properly. Here's another one, uh, a couple or a couple of them of my kids. I've done uh, quite a few over the years. Uh, you know, putting them up in front of the Christmas tree uh, before they're going out to grandma and grandpa's or whatever and snapping a picture, all good. Uh, you know, this one here, actually my son was holding this uh, Tylenol bottle. He obviously knew that I'd be drinking a lot that night and would need that later, so he hung on to that for me. Speaking of which. Of course, you don't have to do this at Christmas time. So here's a couple of examples of uh, photos where I just had a, you know, a nice background, move them, you know, five or six feet away from the background. You have a wall on one side and you just kind of, you know, focus on them, expose for the background, but you focus on them, fire the flash off the, uh, off the, off the wall and it'll come back and it'll create a really nice, uh, really nice portrait that way. So it's super cheap and super easy way to do that. All right, one thing that's important with using this technique is being aware of flash compensation. So what is flash compensation? Essentially what it is, it's when you tell your flash to fire either more or less powerful than what it thinks it should or what the camera thinks it should. So just to, to kind of give you an idea how you would uh, initiate your flash compensation on your Nikon. What you want to do is you want to take a look at the side of your camera here and you'll notice that there is a flash button here and uh, that is where your compensation is going uh, to exist here. So if we just kind of turn on the screen here, um, you'll see that uh, there is no flash compensation. That's the uh, that's it right there and on the on the Nikon cameras with only one dial in the back here. Uh, you, what you do need to do is you need to hold down your flash button here and you'll see that that pops up there and then you need to hold down this uh, little plus minus button here and that'll be your flash compensation so <clears throat> so if you are uh, wanting to up that flash compensation a little bit you just rotate the dial to the right and you can go up to plus one on uh, on the in inboard flash and you can go down to minus three uh, that's pretty simple uh, on the bigger DSLRs where there are two command dials, uh, it can be uh, a little bit easier in some cases. Um, you'll notice that uh, here you'll you'll see where your uh, where your settings are. Uh, same sort of thing though. There is a flash button here, so you want to just hold that in. And what that does is it pulls up your flash settings on here. And you want to use your front dial on this uh, in this case, and you can rotate that down to minus three or up to plus one as well. So that's the settings that you can do from the camera with the onboard flash. And uh, just to give you an idea what you can do with an external flash as well, this is again the SB700. Uh, so I can't speak for all of the Nikon flashes specifically, but you'll notice here I have this set to TTL or through the lens. And then what you can do is you could just hit this select button and it pulls up uh, this little number pad here. And then you can scroll up to using the the dial pad up to plus three stops or again uh, less than three stops so uh, if you do have an external flash it's super easy to do the compensation on this and you get a little bit more leeway on the upside with it so uh, I would recommend doing it that way so that's kind of how you uh, would play with the exposure on the face then because your camera set to manual you're not going to change that because it's exposed for the tree or for the background or whatever you got it for what you're going to want to do is uh, compensate for any exposure needed on the face by using uh, flash compensation. A general rule of thumb that I like to use is if your uh, wall is uh, about equal distance or the, what you're bouncing it off of is equal distance to your subject, you want to overexpose 
uh, by about 0.7 or two thirds of a stop or so. Uh, if it's farther away, you're going to want to push that up. You might even have to push it up to one, you know, 1.3 or 1.7 or something along those lines. So that's just something to to, to be aware of. Uh, better to err on the side of, of overcompensation a little bit because um, you are essentially taking a flash which is designed, you know, was kind of designed to be fired straight on. The power is supposed to go straight on and now you're bouncing it. So you're losing power as it bounces, as it goes out and then comes back in. So you want to compensate for that. All right, one other trick I'll show you is actually you can use your onboard flash to do that as well. Now, normally I hate this thing. I hardly, I never use it and uh, or very, very rarely. If anything, I use it to trigger other flashes. But in this case, uh, you can actually cheat if you don't have a flash like this, but you do have a nice wall and it is pretty close to the subject. You can cheat a little bit by using a piece of white card. Um, the thicker the better because you don't want too much of the light going through the card. Uh, but essentially what you want to do is you just want to kind of trick your camera into uh, into bouncing that flash instead of firing it straight at your subject. So you all know what that looks like when you fire your flash straight on your subject. It's a flat image and it's, uh, uh, you know, it just generally looks horrible. But what you can do is, and it takes a little bit of practice to do this. You take a nice piece of white little card you take a, this is a business card, but you can use a, a light colored credit card uh, or even a piece of tin foil works actually pretty good. And then while you're shooting, you just want to place it uh, in front of the flash so that it's not going to hit your subject, but that it's going to bounce. So you kind of want to have that card at about a 45 degree angle so that the light's going to hit it, bounce off of the, uh, uh, the wall and, uh, and come back to you. So... Just kind of like that. All right, well that wraps that up. If you have any questions on this technique, it's a super simple technique. I use it all the time, especially at Christmas time. Uh, shoot me a message in the comments if you have any questions, uh, but go ahead and try it. You can do it with almost any camera. And as I said, you can use your pop-up flash. You just have to be a little bit more finicky or finessey about it. Uh, you can even use it with your kit lens if you really want to. You just got to make sure that you're um, that you're zoomed out to the telephoto side to the, you know, so to the 55 millimeter, or if you're lucky enough to have a little bit of a longer lens, uh, maybe you're using the 55 to 200 millimeter or, or something equivalent to that. Um, you know, the more you can zoom, the more you're going to get that background blur. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what really creates this effect and this depth uh, as, as well as the bounce lighting. So, so give it a shot and uh, let me know how it turns out. Cheers. Full disclosure, no pants were being worn during the filming of this video. <laughs>